I'd like to do a review on a product that is featured on Amazon for 60 Marlar bags that are, wow, look at that, 9.5 millimeters thick. These bags uh, are manufactured or distributed by a company called Full Sill. So they're advertising 60 bags and 500 cc oxygen absorbers. And they're only asking for $29.50. I think that's a great deal. I think many of you, like me, have been having problems finding Mylar bags and oxygen absorbers during this pandemic time with all the supply chain issues. I've tried to get them from Harvest Right and they were out. I tried to get them from one of my more favorite suppliers, which is Pleasant Grove Farm. I believe they're in South Carolina. They are out. So, like everyone else, I've turned to the internet. And I saw this advertising and wow what a deal so I went ahead and put an order in and when I got them I was not too very happy this is one of the absorbers it is a teeny tiny little thing this packet only weighs three grams so I started doing some research and you know, I guess I have to blame myself because I didn't look at the reviews because the reviews pretty much picked this ad apart. And there's some glaring issues here. This says 9.5 mil, it says 9.4 mil. So I did some research and it turns out that this company is actually registered in Singapore. It has three employees that's been in business for nine months. So with that said, I thought I'd go ahead and test the bags and test the oxygen absorbers and see if they really stand up to the claims they're making here on Amazon. So here we go. So I opened up the package and sure enough here's, here's the bags I received but as soon as I picked one up I thought this is kind of weird. This kind of feels wimpy wimpy wimpy. I mean, nothing like the bags I've felt in the past. And so I looked at the oxygen absorbers. I pulled one of those out, and the oxygen absorber is about the size of a postage stamp. And this is supposed to be a 500cc oxygen absorber. And just as, as comparison, this is supposed to be a 300cc oxygen absorber. So you can see, size matters. This one is thick and it's big, has lots of stuff inside. This one is like, has hardly anything inside. So this really started to concern me that something is not right here. I mean this is supposed to absorb 500 cc's this one does 300 cc's and it's half the size and like a third of the weight. So I started doing my research and I have to kind of blame myself because I didn't do my due diligence with Amazon in looking at the reviews. Had I looked at the reviews, I could have saved myself $30. So we're going to go through and we're going to test the bags, we're going to test the oxygen absorbers, find out what's going on. Okay, so the test will begin. You can kind of see inside, it's kind of hard to see it, but you can see where it's a little bit of white. That's where there's absolutely no water has entered the jar yet. So. If the manufacturer's claims are accurate, this should suck up all the water to the 100 to the 402 cc mark. I then should be able to empty it and then it should suck up an additional 98 cubic centimeters since they say or they claim that this oxygen absorber is a 500 cc absorber. So if one test is good, that must mean that a second test would be even better and a third test would be fantastic. Okay, so I have a test running in a two quart jar. I have a test running in a one quart jar. And then I have the big huge beaker here that uh, is lined up so this one right here should be able to take out well this mark right here is 21 percent which is 567 uh, cc's the claim of the oxygen absorber is at 500 
So this test should be done once. This test right here, which is going up to 95 cc's, will need to be done five times. And this one will be done twice, since this one should take up 402 cc's. It's been 24 hours. It's not looking good. This is as far as the first test has reached. It's supposed to go all the way up here. On the smaller bottle, uh, at 10, 11 p.m., I dumped it once, so it did make it up to 95 cc's. So that I dumped it, and this is a second attempt to get back up there and still a quarter inch away. And then with this long boy, it's not doing well at all. So I'm getting more and more skeptical about these smaller oxygen absorbers. Time for dissection. So this is uh, one of my little packs of the four oxygen absorbers that I got. And these are the little teeny ones. And when I first opened up the package, I thought something was kind of off. But hey, you know, it said it's, these are supposed to do 500 cc's and they're smaller than the other ones. So I was a little bit skeptical. But we're going to find out the truth. So we're going to go ahead and open these up and weigh them. I always cut along the top so I can resave this bag and package it again later on. So we got four oxygen absorbers, and those four weigh 12 grams, so that means each one has to weigh 3 grams. So, all together, let me see if I can turn this into the light a little bit better, but maybe not. So, they weigh three grams, the package weighs one gram, so that gives us two grams of material. Now we know that two, that one gram of powdered uh, iron will absorb 300 cc's. So that means we have to have 1.66 grams of iron in order for this packet to absorb 500 cc's of oxygen and it's not looking real good. So the first thing we need to do, we need to remove the iron from all the other chemicals, from the sodium, not from the sodium, from the chlorides and the carbon. This is our iron powder. I'm getting even more skeptical. So, the net weight we have here was is one gram. So we have one gram of other ingredients. That therefore we should have one gram of iron powder. So with one gram of iron powder, that will only do 300. Just that'll do. That'll do 300 cc's of oxygen without any margin of error. So. I know that this this is one gram of chemicals there, and we have one gram of chemicals here. This is the iron powder, but as you can see, there's still some secondary ingredients in here. So I'm going to see if I can remove these other secondary ingredients. Okay, that looks a bit better, and it still comes down to having one gram. Well, that poses all sorts of problems because the advertisement says that these little packets will remove 500 cc's. In order for these to remove 500 cc's, it has to have at least 1.66 grams of iron powder. It only contains one gram, which means every time someone repackages these little containers from the manufacturer and they warm up, you're going to lose some of the potency. So, I mean, to be fair, I've only tested one packet out of probably thousands and thousands. But at a ram random uh, sampling, this should be sufficient. So what we have here, we have one gram 
of the packaging, one gram of iron powder, one gram of other chemicals, primarily the salts and the carbon or whatever that's in here. So all together, the one pack weighs three grams. We're gonna move on to the packaging. Here we have an old favorite, the Harvest Right bag. A little bit more expensive than some, but hey, you got the nice little pictures, you got the little con contents and the date, but hey, it's a good bag. Has a little tear strip up here. I mean, it's, it's good quality. This is our Amazon bag, or wherever it came from. So what we're going to do, we're going to use this little device right here to test the thickness. Now this little device sends out uh, like an eddy current out of this little tip that goes from the surface of this tip through the material into a piece of uh, iron steel below and it can calculate the distance between the tip and the surface of the iron steel. So inside the case for this piece of equipment we have a piece of, of steel that's highly polished and we have a, a piece of material that's non-ferrous but in this case we're just looking at this one right here so if I turn this machine on it automatically goes to zero so the gauge is on it goes to zero and to give you an idea how this can be calibrated we can just touch this once it beeps at us and it tells us the difference between here is 0, 0.0 uh, mils and right now this is set up on mils so now if we get a calibration strip right here now this calibration strip is at 5 mils so we're going to put that over our piece of steel and we're going to test this and sure enough this comes up at 5.0 mils. So that tells us that this machine is calibrated properly. So now I'm going to do this two different ways. We're going to put the, the Harvest Right bag over my metal and hopefully if I can get this exactly where it needs to be I'm going to test this once. Now I'm going to be testing two thicknesses the front and the back of the Harvest Right bag. Okay, so this comes up at 13.3 mils, so that's something to think about. Now we're going to do our other bag. This comes up at 9.8 mils. We'll do it again. 9. Point, uh, this is 9.0. Gotta make sure I get this nice and flat. 8.1. And what this can do, this can actually run an average of what the bag is going to be. Let's do a different area. Okay, there's another 8.1. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this bag here. Oh, let's say we're going to do it 30 times. That will give a good statistical average. So we're going to zero this out. I think that's enough for now. So our average reading is coming up at 8.3 mils that's going to be that little number I don't know if you can see it but 8.3 mils and that was out of a sample of 18 tests so we're going to put down 8.3 mils now we're going to do the harvest right bag Got to zero this here. OK, 
Okay, so that was 20 samples, and the average on the harvest right was 12.8. So we're just going to come up here, 12.8 mils. Now remember, that's the double thickness. So the next thing we're going to do, we're just going to pull this back, and we're going to take a couple of single measurements inside for a single layer. Okay, so we took six samples, and so the one-sided, the one-sided thickness of the harvest right bag is 6.1. Now on our brand X bag, you know the one thing I did like about this bag, it had this little zip, zip lining here. So let's zero this out. So we're going to take some measurements in here. Okay, so we took seven samples and that came up as 4.0. Okay, we're into this 43 hours and so far this one is only up to this place right here. It needs to be all the way up here. I don't think it's going to make it. Now going to back to this thing, I've dumped this one at 10 hours and 32 hours at 95 cc's each. It's on the third uh, attempt and it doesn't look good either. This one right here, I marked it at 42 hours. It still has a long, long way to go up to its stated claim of 500 cc's. After a day and a half, I don't think it's going to do anything. It has been two days now, 48 hours, and that has not moved hardly any since the 42 hour mark. This one hasn't done much of anything, and this one hasn't moved since the 42 hour mark. I think they're done, but just for argument's sake, I'm gonna give this probably another day. It's been 76 hours, and this mark right here hardly went up at all. That The difference there has been almost 31 hours. Hasn't changed hardly at all. Same with this. That has not changed. And this one has not changed since the 42 hour mark. So I'm throwing in the towel with these, the, the oxygen absorbers in these uh, bottles are well spent and they definitely did not perform and so I'll go ahead and empty the bottle again mark the bottles and empty them and calculate how much liquid these teeny tiny oxygen absorbers picked up while the jars and beakers were in the water we marked the water line then we turned them back up upside right put in the water until they came back up to that water line so on this one here we know this one right here, since I already measured it, is 225 cubic centimeters. And then we have the water line here, and we have the water line right here where I marked this one. So we'll go to, we have to measure the, the liquid in this one, the liquid in this one, but then we have to add 95 cc's twice. So the big beaker was 225 cubic centimeters. Okay, the smaller jar comes up to 50 centimeters plus what we already had, 240 cubic centimeters. This jar comes up to 
258 cubic centimeters. So if we take the average of this, this comes up to 723 cubic centimeters. We're going to divide it by 3, and this comes up as an average of 241 cubic centimeters. So the claim on this oxygen absorber right here is supposed to be 500 cubic centimeters. It didn't even come close to that at all. It was way short. So even though these three measurements were off and on, going by an average is going to be a fair assessment of this oxygen absorber. But I can clearly state that that oxygen absorber, in no way in the world was it going to pick up 500 cubic centimeters when the three different tests I did was 241. Now granted, this you have to somehow factor gravity into this because it was pulling the liquid up against gravity, but not enough to get to 500. Now the oxygen absorbers from Harvest Right and from Pleasant Grove Farms were rated at 300 cubic centimeters and when I tested these, these pulled up almost three times their estimated liquid. So these had a lot more extra material probably because the manufacturer realized that these were going to be exposed to the oxygen to the atmosphere from time to time and they put extra product in here. These barely had even one gram and just to note that both of these, the stuff inside, feels like gravel. So I know that this one is actually spent. So what's to be done about advertisements like this? It comes down to buyer beware. Now, my biggest problem I have with the oxygen absorber industry is I'm not sure if they're colluding or whatever, but there is no information written on these packages. There's no manufacturer's information. There's no net weight information. There's no way to tell how many cc's this bag is rated for. And I think the oxygen absorber industry is being extremely untruthful and sketchy in the way they're practicing business. Now Amazon's a good company, they got a good return policy, so it comes down to buyer beware. If you get some uh, little teeny oxygen absorbers like this, you might want to send them back and find a good company that has a good reputation and buy from them. Unfortunately, Pleasant Grove Farms and Harvest Right with supply chain issues can't keep up the demand. Now I'm becoming pretty passionate about this subject so I guess you'll just have to bear with it but I have reached out to the Senate Subcommittee on Commerce, Science and Transportation which is the government arm that over uh, looks the FD, FDA and truth in packaging laws and I did write them a letter and I'll let you know what happens so you have not heard the last from me on this subject. But anyway, thank you for your time, and go forth and freeze dry the world.